Hi there and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Katerina and today's video will be all about knitted Christmas ornaments and decorations. Few weeks ago I started browsing online to shop for new ornaments for our Christmas tree this year and at some point I thought what if I could knit some of them myself. Immediately after that I started browsing on Pinterest and Ravelry and just in one evening I found so so many wonderful ideas and patterns that I got very inspired by and of course I was sure that I want to make some of them myself and I thought it would be also a great idea to share this with you and take you with me on this little journey. This video has timestamps so please feel free to skip to the part you are most interested in as well as this video has a very extensive description down below so you can find there all of the links to the patterns I will be mentioning, maybe some tutorials, additional details and links links to the project pages on Ravelry. You can find there a link to the Ravelry bundle with all of the patterns I added to my favorites. I think I added more than 50 patterns and of course I won't be able to knit all of them myself or even talk about all of them in this video. So in case you are looking for an extra inspiration, please make sure to check the link down below. Before diving into the actual process of making little ornaments, I would just briefly share the materials I will be using and my approach to making the ornaments. The first one is gauge. A lot of patterns are directly saying that the gauge doesn't matter because you're not supposed to put these things on yourself, so in case the size is a little bit different, there is nothing dramatic in it. And I agree with that, of course I won't be swatching for every ornament because probably the swatch will be even bigger than the ornament itself. I will just make sure to follow the recommendation for the needle size and the yarn weight. The only thing I will be paying attention to is fabric density because I don't want my stuffing to show off or fall out of my ornaments. For the needles I will be using metal circular needles in the sizes that I already have. A lot of patterns are using double pointed needles but unfortunately I just don't have any. Such ornaments are considered to be scrap projects, but I just don't have enough scraps and enough colors for the ornaments I would like to make. That's why I bought few skeins of fingering weight cotton in my local, not a yarn store, but just a regular store. In general, most of my yarn is fingering weight and some skeins of mohair, and I'm planning to hold few strands together to adjust for the yarn weight recommended in the pattern. For the stuffing, I will actually be using my scraps. Basically, every time I finish a new garment, I weave in the ends and cut those little uh, scraps. I put them in a bag. I always knew that one day I would need them as a stuffing for one of my projects and I guess this day is today. I'm planning to make some animals and you need the eyes for them. Of course I could buy a plastic safety eyes but I didn't really want to do that. That's why I will be using just a black yarn and a tapestry needle to embroider the eyes on my little animals. I plan to use a French knot technique to make sure that the eyes are nice and rounded. And in case I would like to make my ornaments extra festive, I also might use a glass beads. I have a lot of 2mm seed beads and I might just sew them on my finished ornament. And the last one is difficulty. The ornaments can seem so little and easy and quick to make but some of them can be quite fiddly and difficult and harsh on my hands. So I decided that in order to make sure that I don't put a lot of pressure on myself, I will start my making from the easiest, in my opinion, patterns, and then I will gradually increase the difficulty, but only to the point at which I will still feel comfortable with what I'm making. And in case some of the patterns will be too difficult for me this year, I won't be upset and I will just wait until I become a more of an experienced knitter. Additionally, before I started to plan for this video, I wanted to make sure that I will be able at all to knit the ornaments and I will feel comfortable recording the process. That's why I made this little owl. It is a free pattern by Katie Levinsky. 
It was really easy to make. It's basically knitted in the round and shaped with some increases and decreases. Then I knitted little wings that I attached afterwards and I um, embroidered the eyes using French knot technique and also a little nose. I think it's really cute and I really enjoyed the process. So I had a really good start and I feel very inspired to make my second ornament. For my second ornament, I want to make Enchanted Mushrooms by Jobs Design. It's also a free pattern that is available on their website. I will be using the same yarn as for my all for the stem. I will be holding two strands of fingering weight merino wool with one strand of mohair and for the cup I will again be holding two strands of merino wool with one strand of mohair but in red color and afterwards with white I will just embroider little dots on the cup and I will be using my 3mm circular needles. So let's get started and knit a little enchanted mushroom. After I finished my little mushroom yesterday, the battery on my phone just died, so I wasn't able to film my afterthoughts, but I will film them today. Here is my cute little mushroom. I'm honestly obsessed with it. I think it's incredibly cute and it looks so lovely. I'm now planning to make another mushroom that will be a little bit smaller and I also want to make one that will have a longer stem and the cup will be a little bit smaller so that just it has slightly different shape and I think it will be a cute little set but today I will be making a little shrimp I actually saved on Instagram a picture of little knitted shrimp a couple of years ago and since then I have been dreaming about making one myself so today I'll finally do that. My shrimp will be pink. I will be using two strands of fingering weight cotton with one strand of mohair. I will be using the same 3mm circular needles as yesterday and my gauge for the shrimp will probably be also a little bit bigger than suggested in the pattern so I'm not sure how big my shrimp will be but I think it will be also appropriate for the Christmas tree so yeah, let's make a shrimp!
So, little shrimp is ready. I'm in love again. Just look how cute it is. This one is again adorable. The pattern was really clear and I'm actually surprised for all of the little ornaments I needed so far. These are all free patterns and the instructions in them are so clear and uh, like it's really easy to follow. Another thing I wanted to talk about is that so far all of my ornaments are needed with more hair and this is because um, on such a tiny circumference it's really difficult, it can be really difficult to keep up the even tension and mohair can help with that just to make your uh, ornaments look a little bit neater but I actually don't enjoy working with mohair and again I started having this little rash on my neck because of working with my hair. So I think I want to try and make this shrimp, but in a smaller version by just working with uh, one cotton thread and on two millimeter needles. This probably will be very tedious, but I just want to try how I like enjoy it, if I will enjoy the result and what I think about it so that I can do it again maybe for some other ornaments. I'm thinking that today I'll try to make another shrimp. Maybe I will also make a smaller mushroom and tomorrow I really want to make more advanced ornament, something a little bit more difficult, meaning that it will probably have uh, little legs and some kind of sweater, most likely, but we will see, we will see. So far I'm very excited and I have been really enjoying making these little cute things and I just, I just look at them and I just, I can't. They're so cute. I really want to make a few of them for my mom because I'm sure she'll adore them. How cute are they? I have just finished the smaller one and she's adorable as well. And oh, and I actually think that stitches do look nice, so I don't think I need to deal with more hair and I can just use cotton or merino wool that I have on its own, which is pretty nice. And this will be color palette for my second mushroom. Both yarns are about sport weight and I'll be using 2.5 millimeter needles, I think. So yesterday I managed to only finish this new mushroom. I actually like it much more than this one. Firstly, the size seems a little bit more appropriate, but secondly, I put more stuffing here and I think it looks nicer. I wish I put more stuffing also here, but I'm not sure if I can change it now. I mean, it's still cute, but this one definitely looks better. I used one strand of sport weight wool single stranded and was knitting it on 2.5 millimeter needles. I also made another shrimp. So this one is a smaller one. I was talking about it two days ago and I needed a bigger version where I uh, held two strands of cotton, fingering weight cotton together. So here are they and they look much better in my opinion than the one with more hair. <laughs> my boyfriend said that this one looks not really appropriately hairy for the shrimp. Two days ago I also said that I want to try and make something a little bit more advanced 
Then I actually checked two patterns I was interested in and realized that they seemed a little bit too much for me at this moment. There are a lot of details to take into account, a lot of additional uh, decorations to make. I just don't have a mental capacity for this at the moment, so maybe I will be making them a little bit later in this video. And today I want to try and knit a little Christmas tree or maybe a few ones. I don't really want to put Christmas tree ornament on a Christmas tree, but when I was looking through Pinterest I found uh, one picture where Christmas trees were like hanging on a wall and I found it really cute and I actually want to make like about five of them and put them like here so that they are just like hanging. This time I want to use a paid for pattern. I found on Reverly the designer Squibbly Bubs and they have about five or six sets of uh, Christmas trees decoration. They are all different and they are like easy color work, some textures, some cables. So I think it will be really interesting to make different ones. I think I decided to make Christmas trees too because I like them the most, but that's the plan for today. And I think let's get started. Hi, so I haven't talked to you for a few days and I think it's time to make a little update on what I have knitted and what I'm planning to knit next. So first we have two mushrooms. I really like this size and I will be knitting uh, all my following mushrooms if I would make any more using the same modifications that I've done to these ones. I will create Rowerly page for all of my ornaments so that if you are interested in specific modifications please check the description down below and there will be a link to the project page but yeah basically I cast it on less stitches and I did less rounds of increases than recommended in the pattern and I really like this size and I don't think I will be actually using the first mushrooms that I made because yeah these ones are definitely better. The next thing is that I've needed a whole bunch of Christmas trees 
As I said previously, I was using Cap8 for pattern from Squibby Bubs, if I'm not mistaken. According to that pattern, you are supposed to knit two triangles and then you should sew them together and then you also sew the little log. I forgot to check how this thing called, but I think you understand me. And um, I didn't really want to do that. I also checked the project pages for this pattern on Ravelry and I found one knitter who said that if you knit these trees in the round you get much neater result and it will be less fiddly because you won't have so many things to take care of after. And yeah, I love knitting in the round, so I decided to modify them to be knitted in the round. I used Judy's Magic Cast On so that I have this part closed from the beginning. I actually nailed the Judy's Magic Cast On and I'm using now it for all of my ornaments. It's very handy and easy to do. But yeah, then I was knitting in the round and slowly decreasing and then I picked up stitches in the round and knitted I think four rows and then I used Kitchener stitch to close this part and I also used Kitchener stitch to close this part. So for the pattern, uh, I mean, if you are an experienced knitter and you have skills and knowledge to understand how such things are constructed i don't think actually that you need a pattern especially if you're planning to knit these trees in the round even like regarding the designs i needed these two following instructions in the pattern but these two i actually looked up other sets of their christmas trees patterns and copied the appearance not copied but i got inspired by the appearance and just like copied them like anyway i also made this one by following the pattern but i don't actually like it because I think it looks a bit weird and it also much thicker than others. I won't be using this one and I won't be knitting it again. But these are actually pretty and they very neat and they all look the same size, which is very nice because I was worried about it. And another thing I made is this little house. This is a free pattern by Aga Tutak. Um, it's named Little Cottage and I also embroidered a little window. I think it's actually really pretty and I'm planning uh, on making another one using this colorway and I will embroider the window using this thread so that they are matching. Here I also casted on stitches using Gigi's Magic Cast On and I was knitting in the round. The pattern for this uh, little cottage is actually written for double pointed needles so I had to modify the way I did increases and decreases. When you cast on stitches using Judy's Magic Cast On you cannot really then fold your knitted piece the other way around so it needs to be folded this way and I think in the pattern you are supposed to fold it a different way. I will write the modifications as well on the project page in the Ravelry and you can find the link uh, down below. Next, I want to make a cat Christmas ornament by Amy Gaines. This designer has a lot of Christmas ornaments patterns. They're all paid for, but they're really pretty. Puppy Christmas ornaments are also really cute. Then mushroom Christmas ornaments. Christmas Elves, Winter Animals Need Christmas Ornaments, Moon and Star Christmas Ornaments. So yeah, there are a lot of patterns I really like. They also have crochet pieces and crochet ornaments in case you're a crocheter. I think I want to make cat ornaments and winter animals ornaments but winter animals seem to be a little bit more difficult and advanced so i decided to start with cat ornaments 
I'm thinking about buying this pattern this evening and then knitting one cat as a test and then of course I will talk about it and show you the process. It feels uh, really nice to make such little things, especially because they are so so cute and they are very quick to make. And let's make a few more. Hi, it seems like a very good time to make another update. As you can see, I have finished five additional ornaments and I suggest we talk about them. The first one, of course, is that I finished the second little cottage. As you can see, they are slightly different because I don't write notes as I go. I usually write them down retrospectively and I guess I don't have a very good memory so probably they have a different number of rounds or something like that but they're still really cute. I'm very pleased with them and I'm really glad that I decided to make them because they were not on my original plan 
These were one of the easiest ornaments to make. So I will most likely make even more of them. I really like this embroidered window and I'm thinking about embroidering something maybe a little bit more complex for my next cottages. The next one we have is Cat Christmas Ornament by Amy Gaines. As I said, it is a paid for pattern. Again, these are heavily modified. I had to modify them to be knitted in the round because at that point I still resisted seaming the ornaments afterwards. I also made them a bit smaller than suggested in the pattern because when I followed the number of stitches originally my cats were turning out too big and they were bigger than all of my other ornaments and I didn't really want that. I think the only thing I needed exactly according to the pattern is the ears. I modified the tail I made it to be basically a tube and according to the pattern you shape it with some increases and decreases. I tried doing that, it didn't really work and it looked a little bit strange so I decided to try and knit up a simple tube and it worked much better. I also made them little scarves and scarves are knitted using one strand of fingering weight merino wool with one strand of mohair so they are nice, fluffy and wintery, so to say. I cannot say that they turned out exactly as I envisioned them to be. I still think they are cute, but I don't think that they are actually looking like cats. I mean, that's debatable in my opinion, but again, I still think that they're cute. I still think that they will look cute on the tree. This is actually my first sample of my Christmas cat. And this looks like a pillow <laughs> and a little bit like a koala. Not very nice. So after that, I had to modify and make the cat's smaller and also a little bit more rounded at the bottom so it doesn't look like a very rough and sharp square and I think I succeeded with that. As always, there will be a project page for my cats with all of the modifications I did. I really hope that my notes will be precise. But yeah, I will do that and the link will be in the description box down below. The next ornament I made was this little donut and this was my second one. It is a free pattern by Julie Williams. The pattern name is Tiny Little Donut. I got inspired by Rebecca from Hip Need Hooray to make them and I'm very pleased with how they turned out. I also had to modify them because their size is supposed to be very very small. The, this donut is supposed to fit in a toy dungarees pocket. So I think they're like about this size and mine is definitely bigger. I had to modify the pattern, I had to cast on more stitches and then do more rounds of decreases and increases, but I also had to make sure that they're still well proportioned and I'm very pleased with the result. Again, <laughs> they're extremely cute. I also added little seed beads on them. I'm not sure if I mentioned that, but for all of these ornaments I used two strands of fingering weight cotton and I knitted them on 3mm needles. When I was uh, knitting on this donut, I really started to feel like my hands were getting really tired. I also felt some pain in my wrists. So I think I need to take a break from working on such tiny needles and tight gauge and in such a small circumference. Yesterday I already cast it on a new project. It's also on the tiny needles, but working with merino wool feels much, much nicer. And this will be a hat. When I finished the donut, I decided that I want to try and make an ornament that is not knitted, but maybe something yarn related. And I saw on Pinterest a few ideas that I really loved. 
The first one is DIY yarn ornaments Christmas trees. And the second one with the same concept yarn wrapped letter Christmas ornament. Basically with these ornaments you need to cut a letter or a tree or any other shape from a cardboard and then you just wrap the yarn around this shape you can add some glue to make sure that it's nice and secure so i really want to try and make a tree and the letter for the trees i'm envisioning to make a garland and to just put them around the house maybe to put one on our entrance door to our apartment and for letters I'm thinking about making like the first letter of the name of the person I will be giving a Christmas gift to. Also making like a Merry Christmas phrase with these letters and putting it also like a garland or maybe putting it on our window. But we'll see. I don't have a hot glue gun, so I'm not sure what kind of glue I can use to make sure that it stays, the yarn stays in place and it will secure. But I guess I will figure that out. I suggest we dive into that right now. Okay, here are my DIY yarny little ornaments. I made two trees. They were relatively easy to make and for sure much much faster than my knitted ornaments. It's also a very nice way to use up some yarn that you are not really excited or want to knit with. So in my case I used some I think acrylic green yarn. I also made like a garland with a contrasting color. It was a thread that I bought in a shop. It's the one you would use to wrap up your presents but I think I have enough to use it up for my ornaments. And this one has red in it. I think you can also cut it with a little leg. I still haven't checked how this thing called, but I guess you understand me. So that you wrap it in a brown and that you and then you can have a complete tree. As you understand, I'm definitely will be making more of them. What I think to do with them is just put them on the shelves like this. I think it looks kinda cute. I'm thinking about putting them like on my wall near my desk and also maybe making a Christmas tree garland from them and just like putting it here or somewhere else in our apartment and the last thing is to attach them to the windows I think it will also look cute I also made a letter and for the letters I'm not that sure they're really fiddly to make. First of all, you need to draw a letter and cut it. And then you have to wrap an unusual shape and to make sure that it's like nice and even. For example, you can see here the cardboard is showing off. And I was thinking about letters I would need for my Christmas. And there is like an R with the hole in it and I'm, I'm just not sure how comfortable and easy it will be to wrap it around like a circle maybe i will try but maybe not i still think i would like to make first letters of the names of 
people I will be giving gifts to this year. There are not that many people, so I think it's easy task to do. Here are my DIY ornaments. It was really nice to make something that is not needed. This morning I finally attached a festive thread to all of my ornaments. As you can see I decided to use the same thread for all of my ornaments because I really wanted to help them match with each other. I also put them all together on this red thread because I really want to keep them together so that I don't lose any of them. And then for my mushrooms and cats I was also threading the yarn throughout the whole ornament to make sure that there is no pulling of the yarn at the top of the ornament. For some of the ornaments it's not an issue, for example for the little cottages or the trees, because it's totally normal for them to be pulled at the top. It's also not that visible on the shrimps, but on the cats and mushrooms it was quite visible, so I decided to do that to make them look a little bit nicer when they will be hanging on the tree and I think it did work quite well so I'm very happy I did that we also ordered the Christmas tree yesterday and it should arrive early December I feel very excited about it and I can't wait to put them all on our Christmas tree this year and I hope that they will look nice <laughs> before wrapping up today's video I really want to briefly talk about my future plans for Christmas ornaments knitting. First of all, I really want to make the second set of the Christmas trees for my boyfriend's cabinet. Then I want to make more mushrooms. I found some inspiration on Pinterest and Instagram and can't wait to try and freestyle some of the mushrooms myself to make them a very unique and unusual shape and also very earthy natural colors. I think it will look super nice and it will be a nice playful project for me. The next two patterns are free patterns on Ravelry. I'm very excited about them, but I have checked both of those patterns and they seem a little bit too difficult and I haven't understood all of the instructions. And I'm talking about Fairy Fairies by Alan Dart and Tiny Sheep by Barbara Lawson. I mean, they're totally adorable and I would be super happy if I will be able to make at least one of them. What I decided for now is that I will try and start knitting one of them and we'll be hoping for the best because sometimes when I read the pattern through I don't understand all the instructions but as soon as I cast the project on some things just clarify itself and it becomes more clear for me what I need to do and that's what I'm hoping for here they are just really really cute and adorable 
Next patterns I will be talking about are by Claire Carland. They're paid for but really adorable. I also made a frog by Claire Carland last year and was very pleased with the result. And I'm talking about teeny tiny bunny and baby penguin. I feel like they both are very wintry and lovely and cozy and I would be super happy to be able to make at least one of them. And the last one is after the streak. I'm specifically talking about swan and the bees. I will for sure be making the bees. And the reason I discovered this pattern is because Rebecca from Hypnid Hooray is organizing a make-along for scrappy Christmas ornaments and after the streak is providing a discount code for some of their patterns for everyone who would like to participate in this make-along. So I would like to use this opportunity and buy some of their patterns at the discount price. And I will for sure participate in the make-along itself and post some pictures of my ornaments on Instagram. I also encourage you to participate if you are interested. Additionally, Rebecca also has a free Christmas ornament pattern roundup video on her YouTube. You can find the link here. And in case you are looking for some free patterns inspiration, I encourage you to check this video. I also watched it and after that I decided to make a little cottage and tiny donuts. That's it for today's video. Thank you so so much for watching it. I really hope that you enjoyed it and that I was able to share some of my Christmas inspiration and mood with you. Or at least keep you a nice company for these 40 minutes or so. I really wish you the most heartwarming Christmas period this year and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!